Okay, so today we are going to talk about hooks, um, adding hooks into your writing. So we're going to let Schmoop explain a little bit of what hooks are, and then I will show you some examples. We speak students. Writing grabby intro sentences a la Schmoop. Just like the beginning hmm. of the universe, the beginning of your essay should happen with a big bang. After all, you're creating your own little universe with your essay. You're inviting the masses to crawl out of their primordial ooze and evolve their way of thinking. If you begin with just a whimper, no one's going to want to come along for the ride. There are as many ways to open your essay as there are to cook an egg or skin a cat. Although, if you're the type of person who skins cats, writing a grabby intro sentence is uh, the least of your problems. The main thing you want to do is give your reader some context. Ask yourself, why are you writing this report? Because your teacher told you to is really not the right answer. Don't state the obvious and don't open with a summary. If you find yourself saying, my essay is about, then you need to put a lid on that faster than you would last week's tuna casserole leftovers. You should show us what your essay is about, not tell us. How do you show what your essay is about? Well, it's simple. In theory, just make a connection to a larger event. Can you relate the past to something modern? Yeah, like that. It's like bringing old fashioned back in style. There's always some way to make it work. Most importantly, have fun with it. Quote a song. Include some dialogue. Make a witty pop culture reference. Tell an anecdote. Just make sure it's relevant. Unlike those first five minutes of every Simpsons episode that really have nothing to do with what comes next. Make sure to keep it universal. Don't talk about anything too obscure, like this. Or too old, like this. You want something that both your teacher and your classmates can appreciate, like this. In fact, think of your intro as you explaining to your best friend why they should read your essay. Sell it, baby. Just make sure to take the slang out. So that's our Big Bang Theory of opening lines. Put things into context. Make them snappy. Keep it simple. Because you don't want your readers to keep marinating in their uh, literary primordial ooze. Okay, so how do you keep it snappy? How do you keep people interested? Well, one of the first ways that you can do that is by showing the ending and starting off your memoir or your essay with a flashback. The novel The Outsiders does just this. The last uh, few paragraphs are the exact same as the first few paragraphs in the story. Um, and so what really gets you intrigued to want to read more. So here's that excerpt from The Outsiders. When I stepped out into the bright sunlight from the darkness of the movie house, I had only two things on my mind, Paul Newman and a ride home. I was wishing I looked like Paul Newman. He looks tough and I don't, but I guess my own looks aren't so bad. I have light brown, almost red hair and greenish gray eyes. I wish they were more gray because I hate most guys that have green eyes, but I have to be content with what I have. My hair is longer than a lot of boys wear theirs, squared off in the back, and long at the front and sides, but I'm a greaser and most of my neighborhood rarely bothers to get a haircut. Besides, I look better with long hair. So this really intrigues the reader and wants, um, it makes him want to know like, well, why is his hair long? Why is he a greaser? And why does he have to be content with what he has? And so then you read the story to find out. Another way that you can intrigue your reader and have a really good hook is to give uh, the characters inner dialogue, their inner thoughts. Ruta Sepetis did an amazing job with this in the novel Between Shades of Grey. So let's take a look at one of those good examples. This is how the entire novel starts. And it's that character's inner dialogue. They took me in my nightgown. Thinking back, the signs were there. Family photos burned in the fireplace, Mother sewing her best silver and jewelry into the lining of her coat late at night and Papa not returning from work. My younger brother's Jonas was asking questions. I asked questions too, but perhaps I refused to acknowledge the signs. Only later did I realize that mother and father intended we escape. We did not escape. We were taken. 
June 14, 1941. I had changed into my nightgown and settled in at my desk to write my cousin Joanna a letter. I opened a new ivory writing tablet and a case of pens and pencils, a gift for my aunt for my 15th birthday. The evening breeze floated through the open window over my desk, waltzing the curtain from side to side. I could smell the life of the valley that mother and I had planted two years ago. Dear Joanna, I wasn't it wasn't a knocking. It was an urgent booming that made me jump in my chair. Fist pounded on our front door. No one stirred inside the house. I left my desk and peered out into the hallway. My mother stood flat against the wall facing our framed map of Lithuania. Her eyes closed and her face pulled with an anxiety I had never seen. She was praying. Mother, said Jonas, only one of his eyes visible through the crack in his door. Are you going to open it? It sounds as if they might break it down. At this point, you're probably wondering what is going to happen. And that's because the author hooked you by providing you that protagonist's inner dialogue, her thoughts. So this would be another great way to start off your memoir or your essay is to really give the inner thoughts that were happening at that time to intrigue your reader to want to read more. Another example is just some really good, solid character descriptions. If your memoir is a, is a story that involves people, which most of yours would, but particularly it's based on some things you've learned about relationships, a good character description would be a fantastic way to start the story. Uh, Collins did this in The Hunger Games, so let's take a look at how she wrote hers. There's enough light in the bedroom to see them. My little sister, Prim, curled up on her side, cocooned in my mother's body, their cheeks pressed together. In sleep, my mother looks younger, still worn, but not so beaten down. Prim's face is as fresh as a raindrop, as lovely as the primrose for which she was named. My mother was very beautiful once, too, or so they tell me. Sitting at Prim's knees, guarding her, is the world's ugliest cat. Mashed in nose, half of one ear missing, eyes the color of rotting squash. Prim named him Buttercup, insisting that his muddy yellow coat matched the bright flower. I think he still remembers how I tried to drown him in a bucket when Prim brought him home. Scrawny kitten, belly swollen with worms, crawling with fleas. So uh, Collins introduces us to uh, Katniss's sister and her mom. And it really starts to intrigue us and get us thinking, why isn't the mom pretty anymore? Why does she look worn down? And why is the cat so mangled? What is going on that has caused these descriptions to take place. Something has happened in their life. It hasn't happened to Prim yet because she is as fresh as a raindrop and she's young. So we have to wonder what happened, what caused this, and that makes us want to read more. Therefore, it is a good hook. So some really detailed character descriptions can also help hook your reader. Another example would be the setting description. If your memoir is about um, really a place and where you went and how that made such a big difference, then this might be the, uh, shop, the what you choose to do for your hook. So um, in The Maze Runner, we have an amazing description of the setting to, to get us started and kind of get us intrigued and wanting to read more. So here it is. He began his new life standing up, surrounded by cold darkness and stale, dusty air. That right there should draw you in. You want to know why does he have a new life? Why is it cold, dark, stale, and dusty? But let's keep going. Metal ground against metal. A lurching shudder shook the floor beneath him. He fell down at the sudden movement and shuffled backward on his hands and feet, drops of sweat beating on his forehead despite the cool air. His back struck a hard metal wall. He slid along it until he hit the corner of the room. Sinking to the floor, he pulled his legs up tight against his body, hoping his eyes would soon adjust to the darkness. With another jolt, the room jerked upward, like an old lift in a mine shaft. Harsh sounds of chains and pulleys, like the workings of an ancient steel factory, echoed through the room, bouncing off the walls with a hollow, tiny whine. The lightless elevator swayed back and forth as it ascended, turning the boy's stomach sour with nausea. A smell like burnt oil invaded his senses, making him feel worse. He wanted to cry, but no tears came. He could only sit there, alone, waiting. So this should really intrigue you. Where is that dark elevator taking him? Why did he start a new life there all by himself? And that will make you want to read more. So if the setting plays a huge role in your story, starting off with a great description of the setting to intrigue the reader might be 
uh, the way that you hook them and start your memoir. Another option is to start with a conversation. Start right in the middle of the action and have dialogue from the very beginning. We saw this in our Beyond Tears example. Um, that author started right with that conversation and dialogue. So in looking for Alaska, we see that as well. This is where it starts. My thoughts were disturbed when my roommate came bursting through the door. Hey, man, I'm Colonel, he stated, sticking out his hand. Hey, I'm Justin, and is Colonel your real name? I questioned. No, of course not. It's Rick, but no one ever calls me that, he scoffed. Good to know, I mumbled. Hey, can I call you Pudge? He asked. Why? I spoke questioning his sanity. Because you're pretty skinny. It's called Irony Pudge. Heard of it? He questioned, smirking. So this right there introduces you to uh, Colonel and Pudge, or uh, the two main characters here. And it should hopefully get you intrigued to, to read more and see, like, how does... Pudge handle Rick or Colonel as the story moves forward. And so if you are writing a memoir about uh, a particular interaction with an individual, conversation might be the place to start with that dialogue. The other option that you have is to write an emotional statement. Um, and this can really draw your reader in and hook them. And, and this can get at the heart of what you learned, why you learned it, and some of those emotions you felt as a result of it. We get a really good example of that in Hatchet. Um, and it starts at the beginning um, where we get such an emotional statement from that protagonist about what's happening in his life. And so here's what it says. Now Brian sat looking out the window with the roar thundering through his ears and tried to catalog what had led up to his taking this flight. The thinking started, always it started with a single word, divorce. So we can see here that Brian is probably really upset about the divorce and you wanna find out why did it happen? Um, why is he on a flight somewhere? And what, what did the divorce have to do with that? And so you want to read more. That's why it's such a good, good hook, okay? So remember, your goal is to add a hook to your memoir, to make the reader want to read your story. So you have several options. You can do a memory moment or a flashback like we saw in The Outsiders. You can do that inner dialogue or thoughts, vivid character descriptions, a vivid setting description. You can um, do conversation and start right in the heat of the dialogue, or you can make an emotional statement like what we just read in Hatchet, okay? So choose one, give it a try. Use those excerpts from those novels as your mentor texts. Model yours after it. Try to follow the same pattern, but using your own words, okay? So choose one and add it to that memoir. Make sure that you really work on hooking that reader and starting off really strong with a great hook.